Hi guys, it's Jill, and welcome back to the Equine in Theory podcast. Thank you for tuning in. Um, This week's episode is going to be on hip targeting, why it's useful, how I taught it, and some troubleshooting. So if that's something you're interested in teaching your horse, keep on listening. Alrighty, so hip targeting. (laughs) So there is an endless variety of ways to teach this. Um, And the way that I taught it was through positive reinforcement. There are still a bajillion ways to teach it with positive reinforcement, but I'm going to be talking about the way that I taught it. Um, So just a quick disclaimer, if you aren't familiar with what positive reinforcement means or what clicker training is or the point of it all, Um, head over to my website, um, jetequitheory.com. I've got a blog post about it, a glossary page to help define the terms, or alternatively, you can check out some of the earlier episodes of this podcast to help explain some of those things, because if you don't know what that means, you might be a little confused about what is going on here, because this is not your average horse training podcast. It's about positive reinforcement. So the goal is to not use force and to let the horse, um, guide the lesson. So um, when I started hip targeting, um, I guess I should define what that is first. So hip targeting is essentially holding up an object, your hand, a ball, um, a target stick, and having the horse move their hips over until they touch it. So when we start uh, with clicker training, we usually teach horses to uh, nose target. So you hold out an object, a Gatorade bottle, bell boot, empty supplement can, a target stick, what have you. And then when the horse touches it with their nose, you click and treat. Um, So with hip targeting, it's the same principle, except you want the horse to move their hips to the target. So um, there are a variety of ways to teach this. And um, there are also a variety of issues with teaching this. Um, And I feel the need to put a disclaimer here because I also got hurt doing it. Um, and that was just my bad in and of itself, but I do want to talk about this because I feel like it's a nice PSA and this is a wonderful, uh, amateur hour podcast if you were not familiar. Um, so anyway, this is the, this is the point of the podcast. Okay. I'm telling you guys things that I learn as I learn them and then, you know, the lessons that I've been taught through pain. (laughs) Um, so Anyway, highly recommend not teaching this as one of the first behaviors you teach your horse because um, the thing about having a repertoire with horses or any animal really is when something isn't working, when they don't understand and they may start flipping through the proverbial Rolodex of of behaviors, their repertoire, um, the last thing you want is your horse swinging their hind end at you. Um, so that really needs to be put on stimulus control and that's where I went wrong, but I'll talk about that in a minute. But so I can't stress enough that the first thing you should teach should probably not be something like hip targeting, Spanish walk or rearing or any of those wonderfully flashy behaviors. Stick to something like head lowering or smile, something that is not going to get you hurt so that when the horse is confused... Um, they can do a behavior that has a really high rate of rein- or a really high reinforcement history so that when, you know, if you're asking something that's maybe a little too complicated, the first thing that they go to is not hip targeting. They will just offer a smile, in which case you can click and treat for that and say, good, thank you for communicating that to me. I will try and make this more clear to you. Because the wonderful thing about um, when you start shaping behaviors is that it's sort of like playing charades with your horse. You have to guide them and, you know, obviously you can't tell them exactly what you want. Um, So as you're guiding them, you have to set up the environment, you have to set up your body and communicate to them what you'd like them to do. So, um, you know, obviously, Uh, if they get confused, you would like for them to be able to communicate that to you. So smile or head lowering is a wonderful way for them to do that. Smile is very obvious and I love that because Zoe, she'll just turn around and smile at me and I'm like, okay, I get it. Time to rethink the plan here. Um, So yeah, I don't know. That's just my disclaimer. Make sure you understand stimulus control and you have a behavior to balance out the hip targeting like standing or backing straight. Um, just so that you don't get hip targeting when you're not asking for it. So how did I teach it, you might ask? Well, I actually taught it in a sort of non-linear process, and that was because I had an idea of how I was going to teach it when I went out, 
Um, but I click quickly <laughs> clicker trainer jokes. Um, quickly realized that I didn't. I it wasn't clear enough to Zoe because at first I like just was standing about at her stomach, and then I just held the target out. Um, so like I'm facing her stomach and I'm holding the target in my right hand touching or like near her left haunch. So stick with me here. I know this is lots of right and left. And if you're anything like me, that's very confusing. Anyway, standing on her left side, holding my right arm out to touch her left haunch with a target stick. And so I hold it and naturally she sees the target. She wants to touch it with her nose. So she shifts back and bumps the target. Um, so then I click and she was like, what the heck? this is a new game. <laughs> so I gave her a treat. And then, um, that quickly graduated into, I'm just going to back up and then touch it. So that was fine and good because, you know, I'm trying to get her to conceptualize that she needs to touch the target with her hips. So I allowed that for several repetitions, but when I wanted her to go sideways, you know, cause I'm thinking if I'm standing on a mounting block, I need her to be able to touch my hand wherever it is with her hip. So, um, she needs to be able to move sideways, not just backwards. Um, so at first I just, I was holding the target initially a little bit behind her haunch so that she would bump into it and she would be successful. And then I started holding it to the side and she was still shifting back, but she would bump into it. Um, and then I held it a little bit further away from her haunch and then she would just back up. And, um, then I was like, hmm. Because then she just would back up the length of her body until she could touch it with her nose. And I was like, well, that didn't work. Because I, I was what I was hoping would happen would be that she would piece together that she needed to touch her haunch to the target. And so if she backed up a few steps and hadn't touched it, then she would look for it and then aim with her haunches. That did not happen. <laughs> so, And that's not to say that it's not, uh, not possible that another horse might catch that. But... Um, for whatever reason, that didn't work with Zoe. I haven't done work on her right side yet, but I am willing to bet that if that's how I approached it, she would catch on since she has the other one in repertoire. Um, and that is a wonderful thing about building a behavioral repertoire with horses is once they know more, they can do more. And then your training just gets faster and faster and faster. So like, I mean, with having targeting, I didn't have to teach her how to target starting with her hip. She already knew what targeting was. So she got that concept really quickly. Um, so, yeah, so that was my first problem, because she would back into it, and that was great, but until I held it a few inches from her side, she would just miss it when she backed up. So then I was like, okay, how can I do this? So I walked, I walked behind her, and then held the target, you know, like in my left hand on her left hip. So imagine me standing behind her like my head facing her tail and I, in my left hand, I've got the target. And then when she would, you know, go to look for me, cause she was like, what the heck, what are you doing? I would step to the right so that she would turn right and her left haunch would bump the target. So she's turning in a circle and bumping the target. Um, and I know that that's really confusing to explain, but she, she was turning right and her, that causes her left haunch to swing out. So then she would hit the target that I was holding there since I was standing behind her. <clears throat> and now I feel like I should not have to say if you are nervous at all or your horse is a little bit skittish or you are concerned in the slightest about a horse kicking you, don't stand behind them. I was standing more towards her right haunch, so I was reaching around her with just my arm. I wasn't standing directly behind her. <clears throat> so anyway... Just be careful, please, God. <laughs> um, don't sue me. I'm not liable, all right? <laughs> I said it. Um, so, yeah, so that's how I started doing it. And then gradually, I worked my body position from the opposite haunch around until I was standing beside the haunch that I wanted her to target. And if ever she started to turn left, I would step right, and then she would catch herself and then start going right, and then her left haunch would hit the target. And I just talking with my hands here. You can't see them. Um, so I hope that this is conceptualizing correctly. <laughs> um, but my main focus was teaching her to target her left side because that's the side that I mount from. Um, so that's, that's how we did it. And, um, you know, I just, I had to problem solve and work through, um, you know, whatever way would make sense to her. Because the first thing that I tried didn't make sense to her. And I could have stood there all day and just frustrated the crap out of her and me. 
Um, But the wonderful thing about training horses is that you get to try new things and the horse tells you what they need. Um, And she needed a different way because that wasn't making sense to her. So you have to also be willing to change yourself and your approach and come up with a million different ways to ask the same question to find out what works best for that horse. Um, So, yeah, I just got totally distracted because my little tay tat he just came and laid right in in my lap and it's so cute and you might be able to hear him purring um anyway so that's how I taught her to hip target uh as I gradually worked around her side um because I wanted to be able to stand on her left side and ask for the hip target instead of standing behind her because obviously I'm not on a mounting block behind her um so I just worked myself around kept asking the same thing rewarding 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 this took about three sessions three like five to ten minute sessions and um she totally got it and then i was able to transfer that behavior from the target to just my hand i could hold my hand out and say hip and she would target it and the other really important thing is to put the behavior on cue so the cue for her obviously became the target every time i presented the target she was like okay swing my hip over touch it and then the same thing became with my hand the only problem with doing that is that Every time you lift your hand, you might be a little concerned that you might have a haunch in it soon. So, um, I have been working with her on only moving when she hears the word hip, or I'm standing in a very specific position with my hand out and saying hip. Um, any other time I stand in that position, if I, um, do my cue, which is like kind of holding my right hand up with my pointer finger extended and my others collapsed and shaking it back and forth in a backward motion and saying shh, 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 which is my cue for backing. Um, So if I stand in that same position and have a hand out and doing the same, almost same thing and making that sound, she knows to back straight. But if I hold my hand out and say hip, then she targets. So I recently discovered that that was mandatory to discriminate between um, because... Um, I had an incident the other day, um, it was actually a few weeks ago now at this point, um, but I was in the paddock with her, and I was working with her at Liberty, and I just had on some nice slip-on shoes from Walmart, you know, just hanging out, and, um, I was not asking for hip targeting, (laughs) I had asked for it in the session before, but, um, I was just, you know, asking her to trot around me. I think the issue I was having is she really prefers me to be on her right side. And um, I was trying to achieve a liberty circle on her left side. Um, But she likes, she just changes and goes back to my, it goes back to where I'm on her right side. So um, as she's doing that, I was, I got out my target stick and was asking her to move around me. But I confused her. So as they do, she just offered a behavior that had been uh, recently reinforced. So she just offered her hip to me. And um, in doing that, she stepped sideways with her front end as well. Um, So she stepped on me with her left front. Now she's barefoot, so I mean, it could have been worse if she'd had a shoe on. But since all of her momentum was going left onto my foot and all of her weight on her front end, you know, just 60% of her body weight, She stepped on my foot, and I was not wearing boots, um, and crushed it. And so I just kind of leaned into her gently, and uh, surprisingly, I held myself together and did not just, like, shove an elbow into her, because I was like, no, this I can't ruin my session. So I just, like, leaned into her, and I was like, please move away. And she, like, I think she realized what happened and was like, oh, my God. And um, so she moved off, and I said some choice words and then limped over to my camera after I gave her a, um, a pile of alfalfa pellets. And then by the time I got to my porch, I had a good old hematoma on my, uh, on my foot. And um, it may or may not be a little bit broken. Who knows? <laughs> um, I don't know. <clears throat> <clears throat> yep, that's the story of my life. So stimulus control, ladies and gentlemen. Please, God, learn from my mistake. And put your behaviors on stimulus control. Do not just have them (laughs) and only have them be reinforced at some point. Like, you have to work up to it. And please read a book and don't just go off this podcast. But um, work up to it so that you're not just, um, 
you know, putting a horse through extinction, but only reward it when um, it happens after you've cued it. So just keep that in mind. Please don't have a green, black, purple, yellow foot like mine, because <laughs> it doesn't feel good. <clears throat> and I have been having a really hard time wearing closed-toed shoes. So, um... <laughs> I have such a silly kitty cat. I'm so sorry. ADD today is, like, real bad. Um, anyway. So, like I said earlier, the way that I've been rectifying that issue of her just moving over instead of just not rewarding it and putting her through extinction, um, I've been alternating between back and, um, hip targets. Since the cues are very similar, um, she's really got to stay, um, stay attuned and alert and paying attention to which one I'm asking for and she's been so good at it. I was so happy because I was worried that it was going to cause some frustration but she caught on to the game super super quickly like within one or two goes. So um, now we don't have her just swinging her butt at me <laughs> anytime. She just um, you know does it when I ask. So um, that is hip targeting. I hope that I explained it well enough. I know this is a shorter podcast episode, but honestly, it's pretty late, and uh, I didn't get to it until Monday night, as per usual, but um, this is rather late for me. So I am going to let you guys go. I hope that you understood. Also, please, please only teach behaviors like this that can lead to danger after you've read many a book and you feel are feeling fairly confident in your clicker training abilities. I just taught this and I've been, you know, working with Zoe at Positive Reinforcement since last August. So, um, yeah, give it some time, learn the basic behaviors and blah, blah, blah. Um, but anyway, thank you guys so much for listening to this podcast. I hope that you all enjoyed it. Please check me out on social media at Jack Equitheory. Um, and you can check out my website, which is also Jet Equa Theory. It has all the books, treats, uh, equipment I use, other podcast recommendations, website article recommendations, all of the wonderful things you could ever need and more, plus a glossary page and a blog where I regularly talk about interesting topics. So yeah, thank you guys so much for listening, and I hope that you have a wonderful rest of your day. Goodbye!